Good evening and welcome to the latest session of HT Spotlight titled Wax Talk. Is your preschooler, that is children in the age group of four to six years, ready for class? Well, the summer vacations are about to end and there is a lot of excitement around meeting friends, being back to attending physical classes and of course to resume a face-to-face -face learning routine which suffered a lot due to the pandemic-induced school closures now parents and children alike they're looking forward to the reopening of schools but amidst all the excitement there is also a concern of children being exposed to an external environment and the risks that it brings home when schools reopened for physical classes after the pandemic pediatricians were flooded with complaints of a slew of infections the most common ones being viral fever coughs and colds diarrhea and GI infections. Now, the main reason for this was that children had led protected largely indoor lives as a large majority are yet to be vaccinated for COVID-19. Now, as they step out again, that too in the monsoons, which typically sees an increase of seasonal infections, parents must ensure that their immune systems are strong and the vaccinations are up to date to prevent the eventuality of any serious infections. In fact, Doctors say that being up to date with the child's vaccination schedule must be a part of your back to school checklist. So today's discussion looks at how you can prepare your child as they get ready for school and the steps you can take to ensure their emotional and physical well-being. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and joining me in this conversation are Dr. Chetan Trivedi, consultant pediatrician and Ritu Rathi Taneja, who's a pilot by profession and a mommy influencer who runs a popular YouTube channel called Flying Beast with her husband Gaurav. Ritu has two little daughters, a four-year-old and a seven-month-old child. Thank you so much to the both of you for joining us in this conversation. A very warm welcome. Uh, Ritu, let's start with you. You have two children, one of whom has started going to school. Are you apprehensive about sending her to school after the summer vacation ends? Ritu, I believe you're on mute. If you could unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, thank you, Gautam, uh, first of all. Uh, yes, definitely. This is something uh, which actually concerns every parent as of now. Uh, because, you know, during COVID, uh, kids were mostly being indoors. And now, uh, all of a sudden, they are being exposed to external environment. So yes, um, it is a matter of concern, especially because you don't want to stop your child from socializing. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I mean, it concerns me that they might would fall sick. She might would, uh, you know, catch some infection when she comes back home. But yeah, uh, but at the same time, you want them to grow and socialize, right? So there should be a good thin line, which, uh, you know, or I want to ask, uh, you know, uh, Chetan, sir, like being a pediatrician that what does he suggest so yeah oh sure we'll get all those points crossed but i agree as a you know as a parenthood is always about the balance on on figuring out what's best for your child and for a large majority of our viewing audience who are also parents you will get the opportunity to ask your questions as well to both our speakers just drop some of those questions to our social media handles and we'll take it forward from there at the end of this conversation but taking forward what ritu said dr uh, dr trivedi i'm sure we have several parents connected in this session who are worried and anxious because of the child's exposure to large groups especially after being home for so long so as a parent of a preschooler how do we better prepare for a smooth return to school keeping their physical social and emotional needs in mind yeah this is hi Gautam uh, thanks see now that's because of the COVID uh, experience we know that parents are always very much protective for their children and they have to be they will be there see as a father i am also protective for my child but the thing is we should be just protective we should not be so much panicky about their uh, well-being so what happens because we had a very bad experience of covid so we are becoming overprotective and that's why the these sort of concerns are so much from the parents what the ms ritu has said yeah, because they are they just want to protect them their kids all the time so they don't want to leave them alone 
and when they uh, send to the schools they think that who will take care of them but we know that these kids they need to have their mental development a social development and a physical development too and these kids particularly those suppose your uh, ms ritu's uh, daughter is just 4 4 and a half years so she, she has never understood the concept of schooling because since 2 3 years she must not have gone to the schools or if at all because you must have shown the school from outside that this is called school because what is happening in the school they don't understand so yes we should be worried because definitely we would take care of them but simultaneously we should be uh, you know not panicky that's the first message from my side yes when you want to send a child to the school you would like to see that they should not fall sick because we know that when there is a gathering it may be not only the schools if we go for a movie if we go for some fair if we go for any gathering there are chances that you your child and you can get the infections so we have to understand that this is just a gathering which is creating a problem and since last 2 years we have been following the strict rules of uh, hygiene say uh, the social distancing the hand hygiene and a masking so we are aware of the things so yes we should be protecting our children but simultaneously let them some give some freedom so that they can have their basic development going very well uh, absolutely so dr tripathi uh like for uh, if you don't mind if i'm uh, i would like to ask a question so what happened was when uh, my 4 uh, year old started going to school uh, i think uh, the last may only so she felt sick quite often uh, during that month and that was uh, you know a reason for concern for me because uh she was constantly uh, getting you know cough or she was catching cold uh, you know uh, repeatedly so that was a concern for me so how do i prevent my 4 year old from uh, you know falling sick when she goes out or when she socializes so let let us get the concept of what is cough cold see in general a child will get 6 to 8 cough cold episodes a year so first thing is if your child is getting say cough and cold maybe every 2 3 months that's not abnormal so what they are getting is they are getting a natural protection they are getting a some subclinical infection and for that because of that they get protection from that particular so that's a immunity building it is happening suppose if we go into the environment where we are exposed to the same intensity we are our children are exposed but children are getting cough cold fever more frequently than us now what is the difference because we have already had that infection in the childhood so that's why we are getting immune to it so that's not to have so much of concern if cough and cold happens it's okay and yes whenever the child starts going to school because in the school there may be a say 30 40 50 students or uh, kids in a same same room or same uh, at this class one child if he is coughing then naturally it will give the infection to other so yes this is going to happen but we were over uh, protective or panicky because of the covid situation otherwise yes uh, if the, your child gets cough and cold here and there this is fine no issue what you have to concentrate on that you have to take care during that cough cold and fever episode so that's the only thing you will try to build up the immunity also you can try to give nutrition during that particular part because the whenever child falls sick so fever cough cold you need to keep uh, uh, you know giving them fluids hydration to be maintained so these things are important and when you send them yes you have to see so four years old child how you are going to explain that you have to keep the mask or when you are coughing you just uh, sneeze on the so it's not possible it's not possible so that's why i'm telling you okay this every 2 3 months one cough cold if it lasts for 3 4 uh, days this fine no problem so not don't get worried about it uh one more thing uh doc uh, so my daughter she is due for booster vaccine now so uh what is the importance of the booster vaccine why why they are necessary how do they help see uh we know that we are giving our children vaccination and what is vaccination we are preparing them to protect get a protection from the disease so we get we give them something which will stimulate their body that will make them immune for protection against the disease now you know that your children must have got uh, the early vaccination maybe at birth you must have gone for uh, bcg and polio then one and a half months two and a half months three and a half months this is called primary series 
so there already you have started giving protection to your child now what happens whatever the immunity has been developing that is in form of antibodies we know that antibodies will be generated in our body to that gives the protection against the disease now that antibodies once it has been prepared or made they are not going to sustain for long period of time so they are going to go down so there will be a waning of immunity and when we have that waning of immunity we need to push them and booster dose is doing the same purpose suppose you have started a train and after some times if it goes slow you give some push and that will give not only of speed but it will also make them go out for long distance so similarly your immunity which is already there but it is going down you stimulate with the booster dose and that will go long lasting and higher antibodies and because we need to have the antibody persistently there in our body that's why and second thing is our immune system is very much intelligent they have a memory cells so if you have given a vaccine the body will body will have some memory cells they will be remembering okay i am in prepared to protect give protection against certain disease but the protection the 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 antibodies are going down so booster will help to increase the body antibody and that will protect, uh, protect your uh, child from the diseases so that's the importance of booster dose so mainly it improves your immunity immunity increase in, increases the immunity as well as the antibody level also increases and it lasts longer suppose yeah. you have given a dpt vaccine at one and a half two and a half three and a half years then we'll give one more booster at one and a half years again we'll give booster at four and a half years again we'll give at 10 years so that's called boosting and there those are the boosters which are very much required for uh, the better immunity i think somewhere we also forget that it's an ongoing process right we sometimes think if you if you taken one vaccine and that's it you're done for the rest of the life so that's an important message there on the necessity for booster doses to to continue to maintain your immunity and expanding that uh, thread of conversation dr trivedi we also hear about combination vaccines is it safe to give a child many vaccines in one single shot it is the best thing to have combination vaccine mind well suppose if you have a hexavalent vaccine so it is containing six disease protection against one prick see ideally when i am a parent i'll wish that my child should receive only one shot and he should be protected against all the disease right so combination vaccine is it is containing the all the antigens of the different diseases in one uh, vial so that is called combination vaccine so one prick will give you protection against the six diseases yeah they may be required to give one more two or three day doses or booster doses but six doses for one time so that is called combination vaccine so there is a difference between co administration and a combination vaccine combination vaccine means a single vaccine containing so many things that is available so we should prefer that rather who would like to have that child uh, been poked two or three places if there is an option of combination vaccine so six vaccines injections and if there is a one definitely it's better to have one definitely. right similarly we have say dpt1 injectable polio one pneumonia one so these all are different but if we have an one vaccine that is combination vaccine the single uh, injection will work so single prick will work so that's a combination vaccine this welcome thing because Especially the, the thing. companies have to do, do a lot to keep it alive in that one combination it's not easy to make the everything together it's not dal chawal uh, we can prepare it and we can serve it it has to be uh, so it's very much good uh, invention as far as our uh, vaccine science is concerned very rightly said doc because uh, being a parent for me uh, especially as a mother uh, it's very difficult to see my child going through you know uh, several uh, pricks together so uh, it's difficult <laughs> and second thing see if i have to give uh, two vaccines at two different times so then you have to again schedule the appointment you have to cut short your all appointments you have to come bring your child particular time so money time and everything has been uh, you know wasted so it's better to have combination vaccine so that one or two pricks or coordination of vaccine two or three vaccines together on a one go that will save a lot of time and energy and money absolutely science to the rescue as they say so for uh, dr trivedi for all the parents who are watching this presentation and the question comes up what should be my next step as a parent you know if i have missed 
or delayed vaccination due to the lockdown. So what message would you say to them? This is very much happening in the COVID times because the people have definitely, we didn't allow them to come out of the home and then they shut down themselves in the home because they wanted to get, uh, you know, they, or protect their children. So there was so much of concern. So people were not uh, ready to bring the children for the vaccination to the clinics. Even though we made the vaccine friendly clinics, so we were separating the infected patients and the fresh patients, so like uh, healthy babies who are coming for vaccination. We are having their different slots, everything still. So the concern is because many parents, they ask, sir, I have missed my child's uh, one and a half years dose. Now he or she is almost four years. Now I think, I don't think that one and a half years dose can be given. So now what should I do? See, mm -hmm. what I told is our body is having a memory cell. So this vaccine where it left, we left it, we can continue from there. So you have to continue vaccine. So restart. You do not to reach, we can reschedule, but revaccination is not required. Suppose there are four doses of vaccine, two doses are given, you can again start from third dose, third, fourth, fifth. So memory cells are working, immune memory is there. That's why it's not required to re, you know, vaccinate themselves. And you can definitely catch them up. So that is called catch up vaccination. If you have missed some vaccines, if you give it at later date, that will catch up. So that's called catch up vaccination. Also, Doc, uh, what are the uh, diseases I need to protect my four year old from? I think she is there, right there, in just besides you. <laughs> <laughs> right time she can hear you loud and clear, doctor. So don't scare her off. <laughs> <laughs> so. So if she is four years, uh, naturally you would like to protect her from all the diseases in the world, right? But what we have as of now, if we can say around 18, 19 diseases, which can be vaccine preventable diseases. Like, so if you give vaccines, you can prevent your the disease occurring to your child. So yes, your four-year child, you, you would like to see that she has been protected by the, all the diseases. But you must have been vaccinated for BCG, so tuberculosis, then polio doses must have started, hepatitis B, hip meningitis, even diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, all this, even typhoid, hepatitis A, measles, mumps, rubella. These all are the vaccine preventable diseases you would like your child to be protected against. But if you are talking about four years, you must have received the previous dosages, primary vaccination. You have not missed them. Even if you have missed it, you have just catched up the vaccination, what Mr. Gautam asked just now. Now at four, four, five years, there are few vaccines which have been scheduled, particularly diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, and polio, injectable polio. So this particular thing, it comes at four to six years. So I think you need to take care of that, that your scheduled vaccine should be there. And second thing is at this age, rather more than six months, we are giving a flu shots. So that is also much, very much required at this age, around four to five years of age. Because particularly when your child is ready to go to the school and we are going in the almost monsoon season. So we'll be trying to give the flu shot also. So these are the vaccines which are, can be given to protect yourself, your children, your child from the diseases. All right. And specifically speaking of the polio vaccine, Dr. Trivedi, is a fifth dose of polio vaccine important in your opinion? You know, India is polio free. So do we still need it? You know, if you could share some insights into why and how it will be beneficial to children. Yeah, this polio is really, uh, it's we are polio free. But mind well, the world is not polio free. There are neighboring countries of us which are still having a wild polio viruses. So anytime and we don't have any restriction of the moment so if the person is coming with the polio virus to a country we never know okay we can't stop it because we cannot uh, it. so there is always threat of polio coming back unless we totally remove it or you know eradicate from the world so till then we have to we cannot uh, you know let down our guards so we need to have a hundred percent protection from polio this is a deadly disease right so what happens that the polio is having a different viruses. Three viruses we used to give it in a oral polio drops because the one of them was not giving any uh, problem to us, but rather if we give in vaccine, it was creating problems. So we removed it. But so now injectable polio is the only option where we have all uh, vaccine viruses are there. Type 1, type 2 and type 3. 
So if your child has received injectable polio virus, then almost 100% you are sure that your child is not going to get a polio. Now, similarly, what I said that primary vaccination, then you need to boost it. So polio, first you have given three dose, particularly uh, the Academy of Pediatrics, what uh, our association, National Association of Pediatricians, Indian Academy of Pediatrics, we recommended that we have to give first three dose in the, of injectable polio at one and a half, two and a half, and three and a half years, months, then one and a half years, and one more booster dose at four to six years. And that is our fifth dose of injectable polio. Because those kids who are born after 2016, they have received the polio, which has been with the lesser uh, polio viruses. So now we need to protect them. That's why we need to have the protection at four to six years. That will give protection for again four, five years or six years for sure. So to protect our children from polio, we need to give the booster dose of polio, that true uh, injectable polio at four months, four to six years. And that's called, uh, that's a fifth dose of polio that has been recommended by uh, Indian Academy of Pediatrics also. All right, to expand on that and to recap some of your points, Dr. Trivedi, can the booster vaccine be administered along with other vaccines, for example, say a flu vaccine, you know, any precautions that need to be taken if that happens? See, whether it is a booster or it is a primary, ultimate it's a vaccine shot, right? So you need to understand that co-administration is possible. You can give N number of vaccines on a same day. You can give, say, five vaccines, six vaccines, so it's, there's no, no issue because there are very one or two exceptional vaccines which cannot be given together. Otherwise, all vaccines can be given. You can give it deltoid. So children, more than two years, we give deltoid. Otherwise, we give to thighs. So you can give on one on right thigh, left thigh, uh, arm, both arms, even two vaccines at the same uh, thigh, we can give it. So co-administration is not a problem. So when you talk about booster dose, booster at four and a half years, MMR, and our flu shots these all are coming in the same age group so you can give it on the same day without any complication without any side effect it's absolutely safe to give it on the same day so there's no uh, issue for giving that both together you're muted Ritu, you're uh, on mute again if you could uh, one more thing doc uh, so soon my uh, four-year-old will be returning to school and since uh, monsoon is also approaching so how can I uh, be sure that, you know, uh, I don't stop her from, uh, you know, socializing at the same time uh, she's safe and she enjoys the season as well? Yeah. So uh, if you like a monsoon season, then it comes in package, right? So um, your kids would like to uh, enjoy the season, but we should understand scientifically, medically, that monsoon brings three things together. One is the airborne infections, right? Because there will be humidity. There will be a uh, few viruses which will be growing a lot. The flu is one of the, them. So flu shot is very important when a monsoon season is approaching. If your child is going to go in the monsoon season, we better protect it before the monsoon season starts. That is one thing. Second thing is a waterborne disease because we have will have a water mixing. So they can be waterborne diseases. What are the waterborne diseases which can be prevented by vaccines? That's typhoid, hepatitis A. So this is important. And third thing is important. This is a vector bone because the monsoon will bring uh, so many flies and the mosquitoes. And these are called vector bone diseases where you again get the malaria, a chikungunya or a dengue. So these three set of things are important. So you need to protect your child. So those diseases, which are monsoon maladies, we say, so those to be protected by the vaccination. Simultaneously, you should take care that your children should get proper hygiene, particularly as far as the food and water is concerned. And most importantly, the vectors like mosquito bites. You have to prevent your children from getting mosquito bites, particularly dengue. It's a daytime mosquitoes which are biting. So when you send your children to the school, you ask them to apply the, the repellents every four hours and that will protect because it's not your house we are, which are getting, uh, getting the daytime mosquito bite, schools. So you have to protect themselves. Ask them to use a full sleeve and uh, full pants. So these are certain things we can definitely take care when uh, monsoon is approaching and you want to allow your children to enjoy the season. Okay, so is there any specific uh, vaccine which my, like uh, I have seven months old daughter and four years old. 
so uh, which i you know should uh, take to prepare them for the monsoon is there any specific vaccine for both of them yes that's Or that's what i said see age appropriate vaccination should be then there your one kid is 7 months so naturally she has finished the primary vaccination till 6 months now the age wise also you need to give the flu vaccines because flu shots are allowed to be given after 6 months of age so our again indian academy of pediatrics has recommended 6 months to 5 years the flu shots to be, can be given right but i'll expand it it can be given to any age so if you are your child is having 8 years and if you want to protect your child from flu you can give it very well so flu need to be given for both of your kids because again 4 year old child also needs the flu and this child also the younger child will definitely need age appropriate maybe when she is when she may require typhoid vaccine in due course of time or hepatitis vaccine hepatitis a or measles mumps rubella like that but for your four years and seven months both are common vaccination is a flu shots because it's a, a seasonal vaccine it's a seasonal flu vaccines seasonal vaccines all right all right at this point a reminder again to our audience to drop in your questions to our social media handles to be addressed by the good doctor here but uh, let me ask a question to ritu as a parent you know ritu the covid-19 shot has kind of driven home the importance of vaccinations as an important step towards disease prevention so as a family what are your views on vaccination and do you sort of follow a vaccination routine for your children uh yes chetan i think uh, uh so uh, sorry gautam uh, so mainly i maintain a vaccine card for both of my kids and i go as per that because uh, uh it uh, how it helps is that you know uh, generally the pediatrician it, he mentions that when is the next due date for the vaccine and that's what i follow so i think it's very important otherwise uh, but it happened with me as uh, you know in covid that i missed one of my daughter's vaccine by a month but as our doctor suggested it's a good idea that you know and the same thing happened with me that because of covid i uh, skipped it for one month but then next month i got it done so i think uh, as a parent more important is that you maintain that card and then you uh, go as for your um, you know what your pediatrician advises you So Absolutely, and it also helps parents know what the vaccination status is for their children, so that in case they missed anything, they can address that uh, concern. Uh, going back to you, Dr. Trivedi, you know, does the flu vaccine have any side effects? This is a question which also keeps getting asked by a lot of people, a lot of parents. No, no. Does the flu vaccine have any side effects, and whether parents should follow any precautions before or after taking the injections, especially for the little ones? Your thoughts on this? the flu vaccine is very safe very safe means not to worry at all there is no whatsoever side effect hardly any side effect of maybe sometimes pain here and there but that's not there even so a flu is absolutely safe vaccine go and get it vaccinated absolutely no problem whatsoever but uh, i would like to add one thing about the vaccination card vaccination card of your child is it is health passport because whenever your child goes somewhere maybe in future right he is traveling abroad you need to have a vaccination card so it's a, going to be a, a parallel passport this is a health passport we need to keep it so it should be updated and it should be up to date vaccination should be complete whatever been shown in the vaccination card so that's one more important point also uh, doc so is there any minimum safe age for the flu shot like can my younger one who is 7 months old take it yes i said 6 months onwards you can give it see it's a flu vaccine it is like flu virus particularly it starts from the swine flu it's a very notorious just what we are talking about covid virus it's a changing a bit so what we need to do is we need to vaccinate every year because every year we are having a new vaccine with new configuration because what they study is over period of 6 months what are happening in the uh, the survey the things and according to that they prepare the vaccine so we are having a two vaccines every uh, year so every six months we get one vaccine but in india what we follow is particular vaccine so pre monsoon because our peak is usually monsoon so we give vaccine in the pre monsoon so april may and at the most june is the best time to vaccinate your child after six months any child should get that vaccine six months to say suppose nine years you need to have two doses when you are going for the first time suppose your child has been receiving the 6 7 months we will give this year one dose and second dose after one month and then every year april may we will be giving a single dose right 
Suppose if your child is coming at five years and already every year he is receiving, you will give only one shot every year, say May, April, May, June. Suppose your child is 10 years of age and first time we are vaccinating, then only one dose can be given. So up to nine years, you have to give first time two dose in first time, then every year one dose. So this is the schedule of flu vaccine. Okay, like uh, for example, my uh, daughter, the elder one, she had the flu shot last year. So this this year she'll be having a single shot, right? Yes, single okay. shot. Single shot. Okay. And preferably it has to be given uh, before monsoon. So this is the right time, right age, right time. We have to give vaccine for flu. Okay, okay. All right, Dr. Trivedi, as we look towards uh, heading to the last leg of the conversation, what according to you are the top three things parents must do to keep their children infection free when schools reopen after the summer vacations? Okay, so uh, see, for keeping ourselves healthy, it's not only the medicine, it's not only the, the drugs or not only the vaccines. It's the healthy body and for that we need to have a immunity so your immunity should be good and immunity comes by a diet and exercise and adequate sleep right so your child should get a proper diet exercise he should be allowed to play and because nowadays the problem is more with the junk food and the screen time and people are children are getting obese a lot we have seen kids who are getting 15, 20 kg rise in the weight in last one or two years. So there we need to uh, emphasize on the exercise and activities. So that's the immunity. Second is hygiene. We have given immo enough importance to hygiene. So hand hygiene, in your know, masking. So it should be a reflex of our kids. Whenever they are going to the, the, the crowd, they should protect themselves. So now I think you can still continue using the mask. Because mask is the best thing. Because we have seen that during the COVID time, we didn't have any infection whatsoever airborne. Not only COVID, but not even cough cold has been gone down. Why? Because just got a protection for the mask only. So that is hygiene. Then lastly, it comes a vaccination. So vaccination will give you your children a protection. So these three things are very important to keep your children healthy and happy always. Uh, one more thing, Doc. So um, now since skies is opening up and my travel has increased uh, and being a traveling parent, uh, you know, sometimes it worries me that I don't bring an infection back home, uh, especially when you're coming back from flights and all, you're meeting so many people. How do I, uh, you know, what safety precautions should I take as a parent, as a traveling parent? I think, see, you and me both are sailing in the same boat. <laughs> you are traveling across the boundaries, right? So you can come from any country. So that's what we are wondering now. The, 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 the virus is they don't know the boundaries. They, don't, they are not asked for the visas and the passports, right? So they can yeah, yeah. simply travel with us. And similarly, when we go to the hospital, we are exposed to so many uh, patients and so many ex infections. So we also don't want to bring it our home. So what we were doing in the COVID situation, the same thing can be followed. So you protect yourself when you are in unknown crowd, you're in a crowd, you try to protect with the mask. You keep washing your hands frequently because ultimately the germs are which are on hands, on the fingertips, they go to the either your oral cavity or nose, that the way it enters. So if you just try to keep your face, uh, hands away from your face, then you will definitely be able to protect. Lastly, when you come home, naturally you try to take first a good shower and then you take uh, care of your kids. So this basic things uh, is, is more than enough uh, to protect your children from whatever you're getting from outside. Mm. Thank you so much for this session, Doc. I'm in now uh, an appointment with my child's pediatrician will be part of my checklist along with the school bags and books, I guess. Thank so you. yeah. Um, Absolutely. Also, and it will also, yeah. uh, you know, it, it takes two weeks to develop full protection after vaccination and considering schools open in two weeks. I guess, uh, Ritu, you yeah. have an appointment uh, with a pediatrician book yes. so that <laughs> you can you can protect your children. Yes. But I'm sure a lot of our audience also has, has some viewpoints on that. Uh, Dr. Trivedi, before we go to the audience, you had something to say. Yeah, that's a very important point you brought in. 
it's not that you give the vaccination to your child and tomorrow he's been protected mm. your body also needs to some have some time to prepare like uh, you know make the antibodies so once you give the shot at least 15 days we know that it requires to generate the antibodies so your your child is not protected right from so to tomorrow sometimes what happens the parents they come to us and we say oh this vaccine you have missed i think you might your child might be suffering from this disease they said sir vaccinate my child first so it's of no use so you need to vaccinate prior to that thing and at least we should be at least two weeks gap after that your antibodies will start generating and you will be getting protected yes uh, gautam that's what Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this presentation as a parent, go to the pediatrician and get more consultation, get your doubts cleared. But for some of the audience members who do have doubts, let's clear them out first. Our first question from the audience, Dr. Trivedi, comes from Ankit. His question is that his child got his flu shot last summer. Does he need to have it again this summer? And usually what's the frequency for getting the shot? Yes, that if he has received the uh, flu shot last summer, this is the right time. He should be given a dose, one more dose, and he should be continuing every year till they want. So that oh, will right. give a protection because we know that vaccine it will be working for one year only. So next time you have to give a vaccine which might have changed the configuration. So you need to change uh, this thing, vaccine because antibodies also go down and the vaccine uh, this thing, configuration also changes. Absolutely. And a note to the audience, remember to make it a yearly appointment with the doctor to get that shot. Next question comes from Anil. His question is, what is the ideal age for kids to take the flu shot and how often should they take it? So ideal age is after six months anytime. And you should give it, as I said, every year. If till the nine years of age, you have to give first time when we are giving two doses at one month interval. And then every year you have to give pre-monsoon. And that's the only uh, schedule should be followed in our country. All right. Next question, uh, Dr. Trivedi, comes from Sarika. She asks, is the flu vaccine needed for adults also? And uh, should she as a mother take it? Your thoughts? Yeah, this is like it has not been recommended, but you can very well take it. Rather, because if I consider myself uh, you know, prone for that, because I'm at high risk, I take it the flu vaccine every year. Because I am getting exposed every time. So if, suppose the, the, the certain vaccines are waterborne diseases. If you are going out, your profession is such that you are going out, you are using that uh, uh, the outside food compulsorily, then you should be uh, taking that vaccine. Similarly, the flu shot can be given to uh, taken by the adults also if you are considering yourself high risk. Yeah, we can say it. It's a, it's a sort of, just like, uh, you know, uh, COVID vaccines. It will be a family vaccine. It is applicable to everyone. Right. Absolutely. Almost out of time. So we'll take one last question from the audience. This one comes from Grijesh. Uh, this question is, can a five-year-old child be given IPV directly? I presume he refers to the polio vaccine. And previously, the child has not received any IPV. Your thoughts, doctor? Yeah. If uh, the child has not received the previously injectable polio vaccine, better to make it a point to give the injectable polio because I, I just stressed upon a bit because it's a tall, purely uh, technical things which cannot be explained very simplified, but still, I take it from me, injectable polio is very much required for your child. So if you have not received it, you give it at least one dose. At least one dose should be given. Absolutely. Some important points shared by Dr. Trivedi and some important points for our audience to remember. On that note, it's time to wrap up this conversation. I'd like to thank both Ritu and Dr. Trivedi for joining us in this conversation and sharing their insights and experiences. And of course, as we prepare ourselves with checklists to get school ready, let's make sure that the children are up to date with their vaccination schedule and prepare for the monsoons by taking that flu shot as a family at least two weeks before the schools reopen. So again, meet with your pediatrician today for more information on vaccines or you can call the Sanofi Vax line. Once again, I'd like to thank Sanofi for partnering with us for today's uh, discussion. Stay well and be safe to everyone in the audience. Till next time, this is your host, Gautam Srinivasan, signing off. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Mr. Gautam and Ritu. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.